Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have Dominic Flieschnik, Talent Acquisition Manager, Brown Brothers Harriman, joining us to talk about how do we integrate the processes of attracting, recruiting, and onboarding with DNI. Hello, Dominic. Hello, Łukasz. Hello, everyone. Dzień dobry państwu. Dzień dobry. Uh, I suppose we need to start in the, in the special case of your company with perhaps the most intuitive questions. You, uh, in March 2020, you were quite busy with recruitment, onboarding, and then things really, really changed. So what happened since? Yes, indeed. I, I think that's a very fair uh, introduction to, to the topic. So, um, you know, I, I must say, obviously, we operate in a financial industry which was impacted by, by you know, the, the, the COVID environment. On the other hand, BBH has been around for 200 years. We've been through different crises. And although this one is like no others, I think, you know, um, we, we managed not to take any drastic actions as we typically do. Um, the one thing I, I would compare it to is really, you know, if you imagine going through a frozen lake or a frozen river, so you don't necessarily run through it or, you know, jump across it, but you gradually march through it. And, and this is sort of the way we adjusted to things. So we perhaps slowed down the pace, uh, were a little bit more cautious, but we, you know, we continued hiring, we continued um, onboarding and bringing in new talent to, um, to the firm. The, the place where really is an impact is the operational aspect of recruitment and onboarding, where you know, I distinctly remember the day when I got a phone call from my security guy saying, hey, Dominic, you can no longer invite people to the office. We need to go fully remote in a very short period of time. So that was obviously a, a big change for us. But I, I would say the recruiting principles um, remain somehow the same. The principles remain somehow the same, but can you tell us a little bit more about the process itself, recruitment process and onboarding process? Has it changed? If yes, how? Right, indeed. Uh, it, it definitely uh, changed. Uh, and as I mentioned, we moved everything through, uh, obviously, remote platforms. And, you know, basically from, I'd say, late Feb, we don't have any face-to-face -face meetings and we don't have basically any face-to-face -face, um, onboarding. So, so that was uh, a, a new aspect. Um, and, you know, I, I think like for all of us and for many aspects of, of live and HR, not only HR, you know, there was no Bible on it. You know, nobody was, you know, having a book, how to deal with pandemic recruitment when it hits, right? So we were basically learning everything as we went on the, on the live um, organism. What I am really proud, though, to say, I think, I think Polish market uh, and the Polish candidates more than any other you know, uh, region of the world that we have access to as BBH, adjusted fairly well to this new reality. And I think um, over the course of the year, we've learned to be adaptable. And um, you know, there, there was openness to, to interview, to discuss new, new job opportunities. Um, and, and, and I think that actually uh, played out uh, quite, quite well. Dominic, is it fair to say, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about your company's experience, but is it fair to say, because when I look at my friends and colleagues, uh, some of them have recently changed jobs and these were middle level management jobs, uh, executive level uh, jobs, and it was fairly easy for them to change jobs. The process was smooth and lasted a relatively short time. Can you comment on, on this market change? Was there a drastic change or is it still a very flexible dynamic uh, recruitment and job market? I'll be honest with you, because I think when we've seen the turnaround is around summertime. So when the pandemic hit, everybody thought it's temporary, it's interim, let's hold our horses, we will just, you know, wait through it um, and, and take let's some work. action and change it. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But then, you know, around summertime, people realized, okay, this is here to, to stay, maybe for another half a year, a year, you know, we, we don't know, but the life needs to go on. And I think this is the time when, as you mentioned, your specialists or mid-level managers decided, okay, if I need to move on, I, I need to move on. And there was more comfort with the, uh, that being uh, remotely, whether the interview process itself or the onboarding process. So I think this is when we've seen the new normal starting to kick in. Tell me, Dominic, when it comes to your DNI efforts, what kind of landscape are we talking about? What kind of history? When did you start? How? And is it 
difficult or easy to lose sight of DNI priorities when recruiting under the new normal? So BBH DNI policy goes back in time. Um, I, I think it may be partially rooted to the fact that are, we are a U.S. Totally organization. Not does it? Yes, no, definitely not. But um, definitely ever since I've been around, which is, you know, five and a half years. So uh, we, we have some history uh, there. Um, you know, it's also interesting because, you know, being a multinational organization, you know, DNI may mean something different in different regions of the world where we where we operate and we're also conscious of, of that and, and you know the challenges that we have in other locations as opposed to uh, Poland and, and our aspirations um, here. But um, to, to answer you, your question, um, I think when it comes to DNI in this pandemic environment, um, at first it suffered a bit as everything because you know all the actions were pulled back and you know we were cautious when it comes to recruiting. We were cautious when it comes to you know running non-biased recruitment trainings virtually as opposed to you know face to face. We we're cautious to, to you know doing all these other initiatives that we typically would do. But we quickly learned there is no need to be cautious. We should be, you know, full steam ahead. And actually, the pandemic environment also created some opportunities. And um, I'll, I'll mention one. Um, one of the DNI um, dimension that we have in BBH is diversity of thought. So aside from things like, you know, gender, race, ethnicity, we try to make sure that our workforce is diversified in terms of their previous experience, where they come from, what kind of, you know, luggage they bring to, um, with, with them. And, um, you know, the fact that obviously, you know, pandemic hit some industries like tourism, like, you know, travel, hotels, restaurants, et cetera, meant that, you know, people were losing jobs and were looking for, for new opportunities and, and to change their career paths. And, you know, for some of them, BBH and financial industry was not the answer, but so for some uh, it, it was, and, and we've seen cases where these people joined for entry-level positions or or some for internship programs, and they reinvented themselves, and and that was uh, another interesting dynamic that we haven't seen as much in, in the past. Is it much more difficult to convey those basic principles and rules of engagement when it comes to DNI in a remote process? I, I, I think it is a little bit. I mean, when we do things remotely, maybe there is this um, feeling or perception that they're a little less controlled than they were in, in, in the past. I think as the time progresses, as we feel more comfortable with all these tools and, and doing things, you know, not face to face, I think we're, we're getting back on the, on the, on the right uh, track. And I think what is really, really critical is to, to leverage of the change makers. So, you know, for me, regardless of the size of the organization, whether small, medium, or huge, you, you can't do it yourself, or you can't do it as a HR department. You need strong change makers in, in the firm who help you, you know, get others on board and, and help you run with it. So I think this is where we place the focus so that these change makers were more involved in the recruiting process perhaps than, than ever before. But Tell us something positive, Dominic. We will not live in a reality, uh, the kind of reality we used to laugh at watching the memorable American production with George Clooney firing people uh, remotely. Right. <laughs> Is it the reality we're heading for or are we going back to the old days at some point? I don't think we're gonna go back 100%, I think to, to, to a certain extent, but you know, aside from the challenges that were unleashed by this pandemic environment, there were also, you know, opportunities. And, and you know, obviously the fact that, I mean, after nine months, things are working effectively, business is running, people are getting hired, they're getting onboarded. Um, this, this works. And, and I think the approach of other firms to real estate will change. There may be opportunities to work from, you know, other distant locations that we didn't consider in, in the past. So, so I think... Aside from the challenges, in, in, indeed, there are, there are opportunities. I think the principles around, you know, hiring top talent, around hiring diverse uh, talent, that will remain. However, the whole operations around it, you know, may definitely evolve. evolve. Um, at the same time, do you would say that this change is not permanent overall? 
you know that yeah that's 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 my take on it. i mean I, I think we're gonna land somewhere in the middle so, so some of the things that we can take from it we we will take but you know i would like to believe that certain elements of the all good reality if i may put it this way will come back in in time it's definitely not easy because many companies like to believe that, that they have their ways and means of making sure that uh, newcomers especially absorb some of the culture the company develops over decades, 200 years in your case. So I would imagine it must be really, really much more challenging with this much less direct interaction to, to assume that absorbing this company culture is effectively part of the process. I couldn't agree more with you, Wukash, and, and I'll say we we make it one of our top priorities to make sure that you know this process remains as close to the old process as possible. Although are we confident it is? Probably probably not. And um, and and there's still some some way to um, to, to to go. Um, again, you know, I think throughout these nine months where we're learning a lot of things, we, we pulled back on some of our onboarding practices that we reintroduced more recently. And the two I would mention is, so uh, definitely we have a whole induction week. So when you join the firm, you don't just go straight to your desk or, you know, desk at home and, and start working. You spend a whole week learning about our culture, playing games, you know, networking, learning about history, because we know how beneficial that is. And, and I can attest to it, having joined five and a half years ago, I still keep in touch with the people I joined with. Um, so that's one thing can that I, we reintroduced obviously to Zoom. I understand, Dominic, this process has an interactive component. It's not e-learning based. It's not yeah, yeah. forcing or asking new employees to, to learn a set of things a day over this week. Indeed, you're right. So, so there are a number of coaches uh, in, involved in, in that. So it's a, it's a live interaction. Some of it is, is you know, more of a lecture type and other, you know, it's, it's, it's as I mentioned, playing games uh, to, you know, make the, the learning process more um, more attractive. So, so, so that the practice that we had, we maybe postponed a bit and we were reintroduced. The other thing that we're, we're um, testing and, and that may be interesting from the DNI perspective, um, and I, I can't say whether it's, it's good or bad, it's just too early to say, but we want to make sure that the DNI component is really there. And even though we have a DNI session in the onboarding, there is one more thing that we decided to do, which is. Um, offer the possibility to learn about our culture and learn about our DNI principles, not to our new hires, but to the people that have not yet accepted our offers. So essentially, if you're a finalist at Brown Brothers, you can talk not to the HR department, not to the business, but you can talk to our, uh, and I'm really glad that I come after Dominica, who, who was talking about it as well, um, to the members of our um, business affinity network communities, so employee networks in, in essence. So if you want to talk to somebody, you know, from LGBT network or for somebody with, you know, women network or women in IT network or childcare um, network and all the other networks that we have in the firm, you can, and if it's important to you, you can learn about it from first hand, even before you decide to, to join the firm. And, you know, it, it's very early days, but we find that some people appreciate that. Dominique. Let me push you a little further on that, because it really is the interesting part of our conversation when we talk about how to shift from recruitment to onboarding and how to integrate DNI into the process. So imagine I'm a newcomer to your company. Can you walk me through whatever happens during the week of onboarding you, you're talking about? I mean, I know we touched on some of these things, but could I have a more step-by-step -step understanding? Because I, I would imagine you've put some effort into developing a proper IT tool for facilitating this process, you surely have. But can you walk me step by step? Just like we're on this fragile lake surface in winter. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so um, to touch upon the, the main point, so obviously, you know, as I mentioned, before you join the firm, you already have a possibility to learn about our DNI culture. If you're comfortable with that, you decide to join our firm, you have this weak induction. The, 
the first part of it is really devoted to make sure that you're properly set up. So all the technology is working for you. You have the right, you know, um, technological backbone and, and, and all the you know, things that you need to know from the logistic perspective. Once yeah. that is done, you probably go through the also a lot of HR segments when you learn on our HR policies, principles, you know, how to how to move around the firm, how to get, you know, the most important things done. So in the first two days, we focus really on what we call the, you know, BBH or must have or must know, so you feel comfortable operating the firm. And then the following two to three days, you really spend on a number of sessions that vary from meeting our top leaders, like the center head and the heads of certain departments. Um, learning about our history, and we, we have a game that we call, you know, uh, um, a history time frame, where you know you interact in groups, where you you know go through different events that were important in the life of the firm. That also helps you to to get an understanding of our business model. As I mentioned, we bring people from all different industries, where you know financial industry and the custody banking is not as obvious. And the model of partnership, which is different to most of our competitors, is not as obvious. So we, we, we do some sort of a gamification to make sure that the, that process is uh, is taught. And then the final element that we spend is, you know, so DNI, banks, how to network, how to communicate. And, and this is the module that we're enhancing and building even further, because in the past, the communication and the building network was very natural. You would go to the kitchen, you would meet so many people and have so many different you know, discussions. These days, it's not an option. So how to use all these different platforms to make sure that the newcomers who do not have a network here other than you know, their immediate team and their you know, induction buddies um, get to really understand the flavor of BBH. So, so I would say those are the, the main components. It does sound very interesting to hear that because at the same time, as I understand it, Dominic, the way you're looking for, the way you're anticipating risks in this process is by making uh, a large chunk of that process feel very much live, uh, like an experience in the sense that you talk to a center head, you talk to different people in the organization, and these are not pre-recorded, these are live sessions, yeah. which effectively means that all those people have to find the time to make the experience much more relatable. And that, that's a commendable effort, no doubt. Uh, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I got to tell you, it's just so, it's so time worthy. I mean, the, the benefit that we get out of it just cannot, cannot be described and, and the feedback that we get from, from the newcomers. So, you know, it, it's an hour here, an hour there. It's a collective effort, but indeed, I would, I would recommend that it can be three days, it can be a week. You know, it's not fixed. But the, the effort is, yes. is, is really paying off. But the, the outcomes and the positive aspects of doing it this way may last for decades, in fact. So one hour against decades of relatability. Dominic, one quick question, 50 seconds left. What would be your word of advice for those who want to integrate recruitment, onboarding with DNI? I'd say two things. Um, don't do it alone. Just, you know, find people that will help you with that agenda, find change makers. I think, you know, if there's one thing that we learned through COVID is empathy. And I think people are much more um, sensible these days. So, so I, I hope we can leverage of that. And the other thing is um, cherish the success. Success builds success. And, you know, if we look at our international industry in Poland. I think everybody understands that. So every time you have a DNI success or, you know, an onboarding success, make sure that it's heard and it's used to, to grow the success further. Find change makers, says Dominic Flischnik, talent acquisition manager at Brown Brothers Harriman. I can be sure of one thing, at least after this discussion, that Dominic certainly himself has found change makers, even change makers 2020. Thank you, Dominic. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Lukas. Thank you, everyone.